So these vessels are used for different types of abrasive. For this particular one, we've got a product called Speed Blast. And basically what we do is we have a lid and screen. So the lid is designed to keep the moisture from the pot. And the screen is designed to stop foreign matter entering the blast pot itself. So to appropriate that, even with things like paper, pieces of wood, and if you recycle your garnet, it's imperative that foreign matter doesn't enter the blast pot because it is a pressure vessel and it can cause inherent problems with its operation. So to fill the blast pot, we do it without any pressure on the vessel, of course, and the garnet quite easily falls in the conical section of the pot to fill the pot and appropriate the blasting procedure. Once doing that, we replace the pot and of course we fill the pot until it's, it's reasonably full. The blast pot itself is a piece of equipment to remove coatings, corrosion and uh, any other foreign matter that's required as far as the specification is concerned or as far as the substrate is concerned prior to obviously painting is the most imperative aspect of what we're looking to do. As far as uh, the equipment is concerned, what do we require? Well, we've got a blast pot, so we need the safety equipment as well, which is a blast helmet, breathing air, and a breathing air filter, a compressor to drive the blast pot, the blast hose, and what we call twin lines or dead man control hoses. So this, we have two different types of pots here. We have a self-exhausting pot, which is only pressurised when you operate the dead man, which is operated with these twin lines. This particular pot here holds its pressure all the time. What's the difference? Well, this particular unit here, predominantly they're pneumatic, so air will facilitate the air in the pot, pressurise it and send, it, send the garnet and the air down to you. This particular pot here, it has a pressurised pot, so when you operate the dead man, it's, it's somewhat more responsive and the grits there, when you operate the dead man, immediately you open that nozzle. The two sizes, of course, is indicative to 3.5, 6.5. You can get larger pots and you can get smaller pots than that again. So it depends on what the requirement is in relation to what sort of equipment you choose. So the important thing to remember before setting up for blasting is the safety aspect of it. How do I maintain my own personal safety and the surrounding of the other people with me. To set up the compressor, it's important you make the compressor level on site and do all your checks, the mandatory checks as far as oils and so forth. Make sure that you appropriate your hoses in a manner with large radiuses. Also too, utilize whip checks and safety pins, which we'll show as we go through this video and, and put this equipment together. The important thing about breathing air when blasting is that you must appropriate the compressor in such a manner that it cannot breathe its own exhaust fumes. So what I mean by that is that uh, make sure that it's in a wide open environment so that the exhaust fumes can't be drawn back into the compressor and sent down the line to you. We do have equipment that alarms us as far as CO2 is concerned and I would strongly suggest that if you're in an environment where you are concerned about exhaust fumes, I would implore you to utilise CO2 monitors to alert the operator if there is any danger as far as CO2 or exhaust fumes is concerned. The equipment itself is relatively simple, but at the same time, you have to make sure that you have all the appropriate equipment to do the job properly. In saying that, we have different sized blast hoses, different sized blast nozzles, different types of media, as I suggested earlier. And also too, the media is designed to do a certain job. So it's important you select the appropriate media for the appropriate outcome. As far as the pots are concerned, you can see here, they have what we call a hand hole in the front of them. That's predominantly for inspection why would we inspect the pot? Well, because it's a pressure vessel, there is a requirement for periodic inspection. And also too, on the blast pots, there'll always be 
a product identification tag on there for registration information. Primarily because it's a pressure vessel, it has to be inspected periodically and that's why we give you the opportunity to be able to open these pots and inspect the internal wall integral strength of the pot to ensure that it hasn't been undermined by corrosion. Undermined by corrosion. A compressor without an after cooler or an interruption to the line to enable the air to be dried. So a compressor ultimately will send water through the air line and into a blast pot. So the problem is with that is that it impedes the flow of the grit or the garnet to the valve, the appropriating valve, the metering valve to send the grit through to you. So you get a consolidation of garnet and moisture which impedes the operation of the pot. The other problem is with moisture is that it uh, will end up ultimately coming out the end of your blast nozzle and onto the substrate that you're trying to achieve a class of blast. So that moisture is a contaminant immediately. So to do this appropriately, what we do is we'll intercept the main airline, the bull hose, with an after cooler or what we call an air prep. The air prep facilitates appropriate dry air prior to entering that blast pot. So it's imperative that when you're utilising these pressure vessels, there is no moisture in the air and the pot can run without continual adjustment of the valve itself. So the valve on the bottom of these pots meters the amount of grit you have come through. So with moisture mixed with the garnet, it can impede the flow of the grit to the bottom of this conical section of the pot. It can also inherently have an, a detrimental effect on how the, meter, the media is metered as it flows through the blast hose itself. So ultimately be going back and forth, back and forth, altering the amount of grit that's coming through to, to accommodate the, the moisture that is impeding the flow of the garnet itself. So all of those facts have a detrimental outcome in relation to what you're trying to achieve.